All right, guys, uh, this is Dwayne with Tyler, and David can't call in for some reason, so it's just me and Tyler, but we're going to just uh, have a good time talking about Survivor, and it's our, uh, Tyler, you are our first exit interview ever. Dude, this is the beginning of something, this is the beginning of, of, a, of a magical marriage between you and yes. exit interviewees. Hey, let's do this. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's, I don't know if we want to do exit interviews every week, but. But uh, but we're thrilled to do yours. So, so thanks for uh, for letting us do it. It's pretty awesome. Awesome, man. Let's get into it. Let's do it. I have a gr- I have a greater or less than question. Okay. All right. Pro football teams, final three alliances. Which one did you have what more of? <laughs> what have Which one did you have more of? of? Uh, really funny <laughs> jokes. Really funny jokes. Look, I had a one final four alliance. Okay. I had one okay. Final Four alliance, and I had, like, way too many pro football teams. And here's the reality. They all ultimately fired me. So what you going to do? Oh, wow. Yeah. But you got to play at, you know, Dallas Stadium, which is pretty amazing. I got to put on the helmet on both sides. You know, put the buff That's on, right. put the helmet on. So, yeah, I got, right. no, I got no regrets. So did you really want to take Carolyn to the Final Three, or were you going to do to her what she did to you? Heck no. I'm going to do to her what she did to me. In fact, I was going to do that. Episode. I was going to do that. Oh, were you really? <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, she when when Mike and Shereen kind of outed me and uh, didn't play the idol, or, uh, and she didn't play the idol. You know, at that at the tribal, and I came back and I'm like, come on, man, we did this together. Like that was the biggest threat on me of the game, and you're just sitting there. And she goes, I didn't even bring the idol to tribal. You didn't bring the idol to tribal. Like, are, are we playing the same game here, girl? You never know when things are going to happen in tribal. We've got to be thinking through this right. together. And so right. when she kind of like that, was that doubt ran through my mind. It's like, yo, this girl's not thinking about anything other than herself, you know, which is okay. Right. Like, it's Survivor. We got back from yeah. We get back from Ann Ward, and Rodney is pissed. He is fused. And I'm like, all right. You know, like, he wants Mama C gone. Dan and Will were both like, yeah, let's get her out of here. I suddenly had a bunch of people vote toward Mama C, and I hadn't even said her word. So nothing to get back to her like Tyler's coming for you. This is all these people shared with me that they wanted her gone. So, yeah, right. I was running for her. It was, time, it was probably time to, you know, get that idol out of there. But I was just waiting. I was just waiting yeah. to get to immunity, and she wins immunity. And suddenly yeah. everything shifts, you know. Yeah. Um, everything shifts. We've got to make a new plan. So I go right back into, like, what's up, girl? Like, what are we going to do? Let's work this out. We've got to find a force. Just stick to the plan. Get rid of Dan. He's got a plan. It's scary. And all of a sudden I, like, find myself walking down the back path with my torch snuff yeah. and going to Ponderosa. And, like, what happened? Yeah. Talking to the psychiatrist while you eat a banana. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll or peanut eat. butter. Yep. <laughs> I tell you what, man, they got to be careful because Carolyn, man, she's a beast at those immunity challenges. So she is. They don't have to be uh, careful. I'll say this. You know, like, it, Will and, and Rod and Sierra haven't done a whole lot in immunity challenges. So, yeah. you know, and Dan, just kind of been Dan. It's going to come down to Carolyn and Mike in immunity challenges. My money would yeah. be on Mike. I just think he's stronger. But you right. have to think that eventually he's going to lose and they're going to get him. And, you know, Carolyn, by getting rid of me, bought herself another three days. If she plays the aisle yeah. successfully again, she'll buy herself another three. I mean, she's moving further yeah. and further along in this game. And, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Man, Mike, just that that stupid auction move just really screwed up his game. So It did. At least that's you know, the way it looks this like is, for this us. Is, yeah. This is the way I described it. You know, remember the barrels where, like, we had to, like, walk on the barrels, the hot lava barrels, <laughs> and, you know, we're maneuvering yes. the board and stuff? Our game was yeah. my game. It was slow and steady. It was inclusive. Right. It was all teamwork. It was like, guys, we're together. We're working to this. One after another, just maneuver. Mike's was everybody stand on a barrel, and I'm going to on my hands and, on my hands and knees and try to make <laughs> something happen. I'm going to do this. Yeah. It's out of control. It's by the seat of your pants. It's exciting. You know, it's intense. Right. It leads to, like, big successes and deep, dark, depressing failures, um, yeah. you know, and Mike came in the, after the auction, blew it up, and now he's having to play a game by the seat of his pants, whereas I was playing something I thought was much more methodical, much more calculated, much more relational, much more working, right. you know, with a group to just, you know, do the numbers, just slow and steady, eliminate the bad guys, do the numbers. Right. But you know what, like, right. here I am talking to you, Mike's still in the game, uh, yeah. you know, can he keep it up much longer? Uh, history says no. So, you know, but, you know, he, he outlasted this me. We'll see. So I got to hand it to him. Yeah. yeah. So, so would you describe yourself as a chaos cast type of player where you 
like to poke and prod and then watch what happens? Yeah, maybe a little bit. But, you know, for me, it wasn't about, like, setting people off. It was more about kind of, like, laying the foundation. You know, everybody's like, oh, you got right. Will fired up. You got Will all fired up, and that's why he went off on Shereen. The reality was Will was in my alliance. Shereen had been walking around talking about, hey, this, you know, he may have hit food. And so I, they come up to me, and they're like, we're going after Will. And I'm like, all right. So I walk up to Will and said, just want to let you know, dude, like, people are coming. Right. And I want you to do the same for me. They're coming. I don't know what you're going to say, but just know that they're going to bring this up. And, you know, have a response right. and have a rebuttal. And it wasn't like I came up to him and I'm like, yo, let's go get her. Let's go get her right. Well, right. Right. Back. Sure. You know, for me, it's like just making people aware of things. Like, hey, there's, right. you know, we got room to talk on this catamaran, Dan. Like, we're, we're cool. It's not like I want you to talk and run your mouth and get in trouble. So, for me, I feel like Cass might have been, I mean, there's chaos in her name. She may have been a, li- a little bit more. You know, like poking, prodding to the point of, you know, maybe trying right. to, you know, kind of injure. Whereas I'm more like, you know, kind of just putting my spurs into a, you know, to the horse just to pick it up from a, a walk to a trot. You know, let's just keep, let's just keep right. moving. Yeah. Okay. So when did you become a target? Because for a while there, you and Carolyn were, you know, you were kind of the swings. Where, which way are you going to go? You weren't a target. So at what point in the game did you become a target? Well, I think, you know, in my mind, I was always feeling like I was a target. It's just whether or not people okay. really started to understand it. When, when Mike and Shereen kind of blew it up, is I think when everybody else kind of went around going like, oh, you know, he's not a bad guy. And all of a sudden realized, like, oh, crap. Like, this dude's kind of, like, going to win. And the jury liked yeah. him. So that sort of, yeah. I, I think, brought it to light uh, a little bit more. And that's when I realized, like, all right, the slow and steady kind of quiet calculating move, like, we got to get rid of this. Mm-hmm. we got to start thinking bigger and bigger. And that's when I'm like, all right, Carol, Carol. Carolyn, let's go. Now, I still approached my right. alliance very calm and calculating, but it was like, this was a big move. We're going to start to backstab Carolyn. And, then, you know, yeah. like I said, she went to immunity and the rest is history. Yeah, yeah. So the whole, uh, the whole Mike coming back after the, um, after the auction and yeah. really using bad timing, the way I saw Rodney play it, see, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like Rodney's playing a better game than people are giving him credit for. And and I could be wrong, but, but what I noticed was Rodney took what Mike did and blew it up, but he blew it up to Rodney's advantage. Am I, am, am I right in, in how I'm seeing that? Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe I mean, not, here's, maybe. Here's, here's, here's kind of what we were. We had, we had what was, we were calling a top seven, which was, this, uh-huh. you know, the, 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 it was – or it was the it was the yeah it was the top seven it was the seven that you basically saw last night that was the group that was our core group um, when we had about I think there was nine left in the game and Mike came in and he blows it all up he blows right, it up after right. the auction and all and and you know we had been you'll see that at the beginning of the episode right because he's like we got to get rid of Mike and, it was, and I go pause yeah. it hold it we'll come back to it now it's probably not the right. time we still got seven let's like let's say top seven to Mike but instead of getting out at nine. Let's get him out of eight. Uh-huh. You know, let's, 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 and, you know, he'll think seven. We'll get him out of eight. We'll jump on it. Well, Mike comes into camp. He's like, I know you guys are coming for me. The reality was we were coming for him. Everyone was coming for everybody. Right. But we weren't right. coming for right. him at nine. And so Rodney right. got really pissed because Rodney's like, yo, we weren't coming for you, bro. You're freaking out. You're hearing the wrong things. The reality was, yes, we were, but it was probably going to be about another two or three days. So Mike was right and he was wrong. And Rodney was right okay. and he was wrong. Um, right. But it, it led to a big explosive. Like I don't believe you, and you don't believe me, and you're a liar, and you're a liar. And then right. Mike got more and more frustrated. Roddy got more and more frustrated. I got the heck out of Dodge because I don't want to sit there <laughs> and all that. And right. um, you know, it led to Mike being spun off and being completely ostracized from the seven, which turned into a six yeah. now with Mike, you know, scrambling. Right. right. All right. So since I only have like a minute or two left with you, when Shereen was washing dishes. Half Monty, right? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you and Joaquin just turn around and walk away? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I mean, I know she it's like this has only happened once. It, it, it happened on a, a few different occasions. Shereen was spent yeah. a lot of time, not a lot of time. Shereen was around camp by the campfire. My most vivid memory, besides the one we saw, was me walking, having this massive tree, you know, carrying it back into camp for firewood, walking up the slope into camp, Shereen standing over the fire, 
bending over, pulling off her underwear, <laughs> throwing it into a pot. And Mama sees like, you gonna look at this? And the tree just falls off my shoulder into the ground. <laughs> like, what? What is going on right now? Did I just really see what I saw? You know, oh my God! She bless her heart. Yeah. Maintains that you know she didn't have any other way to cover up. Look at her. Look at her pictures on day one. The girl's got tights. The girl has a dress and come down to her knees. She's got at least two yeah. different ways. Yes, we didn't have our well, hey. suits yet. But, you know, it's a throwback to hat. We didn't follow her down to the beach. You know, like, it's, uh, you know, it's strange. Make it fun time. Yeah. I just thought it was funny because you are sitting there complaining about it, but you won't leave. <laughs> it's kind of like when you're driving by an accident, you know, you, you just have to slow down to look. So. Well, we were standing down there, and, and you know, she was right. out in the water doing dishes, and then she kind of walked right. up and approached and us. And she just walked up, right, right. You know, whatever. All right, man. What so, so what did y'all do for entertainment? Because, I mean, you're out there uh, for so long. Did y'all, like, have little plays or? Tell stories, sing songs, tell jokes, yeah. do impressions of cast and crew, you know, try to make yeah. the time go by. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was it was tough. We did a lot of fishing. I got to learn how to fish and, you know, and cook and clean yeah. and make the shelter better. It was Their days are slow. And they're purposely slow so that people start to run their yeah. mouths and get in trouble. So, but all in all, uh, an opportunity I'll never look back on with any regret. A fantastic right. experience. Uh, a lifetime of memories. Of yeah. And, and you got a Survivor Talk with D&D t-shirt. I mean, I got what more could you ask for? Yeah. What more could you ask for out of an expi- out of a survivor well, experience? I, I could have asked for that and the money. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I heard Mike. I saw a picture of Mike Holloway. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Mike got an autographed shirt, and so did. Uh, uh, well, my mind went blank. I don't remember her name now. She's going to kill me. Portia. Portia. Well, good to chat with you, man. And tell your partner next time uh, you get on the horn when I call in. We'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more. That's right. What's up with that? All right, man, you have a great time uh, with the rest of your interviews and looking forward to watching the uh, rest of the season. All right, bud. Great chat. All right. Bye-bye. Later.